Namaskar, dear learners, welcome to this lecture on discourse analysis. I am Dr. K. S. Kusuma, Associate Professor at AJK Mass Communication Research Center, Jamia Millia Islamia. There are a number of ways that we can analyze the offline content or we can say the secondary data. There are two types of data, one is primary data where you will be going to the field and uh, talking to the respondents and getting the data and analyzing and presenting the report. The other type of, type of data is secondary data. Secondary data uh, is uh, present in variety of forms, text, video, audio and uh, speech, conversation and different formats. So here that is all in communications research, we call it as a content and we call it, there are number of content analysis methods are there. There are textual analysis, there is uh, discourse analysis, there is qualitative content analysis, quantitative content analysis and frame analysis, semiotic analysis where it deals with uh, uh, analyzing the visuals. So now, today we are focusing on one of the branches of content analysis, one of the approaches of content analysis that is discourse analysis and since the study of language in use as a goal of education and an instrument of social control and social change is the principal concern of applied linguistics. This explains that discourse analysis is mostly to analyze the various uh, uh, elements of the language that uh, uh, during the conversation and dialogue and also a printed and uh, presented through various uh, uh, audiovisual format. It is important to see why discourse analysis has such a vital part to play in the work that applied linguistics does and why so much of the work has been uh, done over the last few decades on developing the theory and practice of discourse analysis uh, being done in applied linguistics. And here we are in uh, mass communication and journalism, we are using discourse analysis to understand the media texts. You must, uh, I, I would like to, you to refer to one of the very important book uh, by Norman Fairclough. Uh, the title of the book is um, uh, Media Discourse Analysis. So here, uh, through discourse analysis, we are trying to understand, we can analyze the, the language of uh, the press, the language of the media, the language of the reporting, the language uh, of the, uh, uh, maybe uh, you can say a, a photograph, maybe it is not only the text that is written. So, discourse analysts work with language data including talk, documents and broadcast material. That is why we, it is important to use this uh, discourse analysis in the media and journalism field. If you look at the definition, analysis of elements of a language that extend or operate beyond the sentence. Okay? Sometimes some things is said, but not what is exactly said, there may be inner meaning. So, discourse analysis will be helpful to understand maybe what is not said, its con connotation, denotation and the context of it is also how meaning can be made, uh, sense of it that can be understood. Stubbs M in 1983 defines that discourse analysis is also concerned with language, its use in social contexts 
and in particular with interactions or dialogue between speakers, okay, a dialogue or a speech. So, discourse analysis is sometimes defined as the analysis of the language beyond the sentence. So, here what is said is also analyzed, what is implied is also analyzed. According to the Oxford Dictionary, it defines discourse analysis as linguistics, a method of analyzing the structure of text or utterances longer than one sentence, taking into account both their linguistic content and their sociolinguistic context and analysis performed using this method. So, here the, the sociolinguistic implications of the, uh, the spoken text is also uh, studied. Um, so, here the basic ideas in discourse analysis, one is uh, text analysis that is writing and if you see the, the in this the structure of a discourse uh, of the speech events and now what I am doing now, it is an event, okay. the delivering lecture is a speech event and conversation analysis. If you are also speaking to me and there is again conversation analysis is again presented as a separate method also, a tool in discourse analysis also. So, in conversation analysis what happens, turn taking, I speak and you will also reply. There is a conversation between two people or among many people. So, here that discussion is also analyzed and the cooperative principle by knowing the background knowledge, so that we can understand the, uh, the meaning of meaning and context of the what is spoken, um, not only its literal meaning, but also in its contextual meaning. And let us look at the basics of text analysis. Cohesion. Cohesion is the grammatical and or lexical relationship between the different elements of a text. Okay. If you look at the text very carefully, there are punctuations, there are pauses, there are different uh, uh, grammatical uh, choice of words that do communicate. So, here the other one is coherence. Coherence is the relationship which link the meaning of the utterances in a discourse or of the sentences in a text. So, here the sentences in a text may be they are telling more than what they are written in that context of the uh, lecture or uh, whatever you are reading the piece of uh, report. So, there are certainly no cohesive ties within this fragment of discourse, easy to interpret. And the other one is speech events. Speech events include interactions such as conversation at a party or maybe you say sometimes you have a news debates uh, or sometimes you have a variety of uh, leaders who are giving speeches or lectures and uh, maybe ordering a meal. Any speech event comprises of several components. What are they? Debate, lecture, interview, game, daily routine and many, many examples we can give. So, here we are especially studying, we are not uh, studying the literature point of view, we are trying to understand how these can be studied in the field of journalism and mass communication and uh, basics of conversation analysis. So, one is turn taking which have uh, and the cooperative principle hedges and implicatures. Let us see one by one. Implicatures is an additional meaning conveyed by a speaker adhering to the cooperative principle. So, in this uh, I mean to say what it implies that is very, very important and again depending on the whom you are speaking then the knowledge of the other person about you and you about other person are the event understanding which you are speaking about. The background knowledge, the background knowledge is an important uh, information that is not in the text, but 
it is used from memory by a reader or to understand the text. For, for example, if I go to uh, my school friend, is it that uh, in the class 10th, uh, what you said, uh, maybe where we have done, what we have done, maybe if you are referring, we have a common memory associated with it. In the same thing in the news events also, if you are ref referring for example, 9-11, if you are referring for example, um, uh, maybe freedom uh, movement, maybe some other uh, thing. So, we have a memory associated with it. And now schemas and uh, in this uh, schema is a con conventional knowledge which exists in memory. Okay? There is a certain kind of upbringing, conditioning, where you make certain perception, certain memory. If you hear, so describe what happened during a visit to a supermarket. In this, you do not have to be told what is normally found in the supermarket. You already have a supermarket in your schema. That means, you made certain perception. Uh, I mean to say that if I say that uh, going to a cinema hall, maybe watching TV. Watching TV means uh, everybody will have certain kind of uh, um, uh, images are there, memories are there. So, you have a schema which is already there. The same as uh, for the supermarket, food is displayed on shelves, arranged in uh, uh, as well shopping carts and baskets, checkout counters. And same way, if you are watching uh, cinema theatre, there are uh, um, there, there is a gate, there is popcorn, there are seats, they are reclining and uh, there will be seats behind you, seats behind in front of you and uh, there are different rows and there is a, uh, a dark, uh, it darkens when the cinema starts. So, you have a different schema understanding of it, if you have an experience prior to this. The other one is, I would say that these are all part of uh, the background knowledge. I am mean, like I have already told you, the, the school, classroom, supermarket, your uh, uh, various events that you have witnessed in television. Maybe sometimes you uh, have been watching certain advertisements over a period of time and uh, you have been, for example, certain uh, news items presented in Hind the Hindu newspaper or a television and, and uh, for example, NDTV or maybe Indian Express or Hindustan Times, their way of presenting and language is entirely different. Uh, when we actually look at, uh, you can sense it even if, if we remove all the tags uh, to it, if you present a text, you will be able to identify. And script is essentially a dynamic schema in which conventional actions take place. So, let us see hedges. Hedges can be defined as words or phrases used to indicate that we are not really sure that what we are saying is insufficiently correct or complete. That means, if I am saying hedgest uh, means, uh, hedgest uh, is a kind of, hedgest is a sort of, hedgest is uh, something. If I am if, if telling you like this, that means, th these are called hedges in a, in a, in a conversation, uh, in a discourse these are called dis, uh, hedges and which are uh, in the accuracy of statements as in description such as his hair uh, was kind of long, the book cover is sort of yellow, I mean to say that it is not exactly what uh, accurately what we are telling. So, these are also very, very important in the when we are reading news, when we are listening to the news anchors, sometimes uh, these kind of things uh, um, also we need to analyze when we are actually uh, looking at, for example, uh, we are looking at the, all the editorials of a newspaper. If you are looking at all the prime time television debates, then you are looking at the language with all these, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, elements of the uh, language and clear clarity, I mean clearly our understanding of what we read is not only based on what we see on the pace, okay. the language structures, I mean to say that, but also on the other things that we have in mind, knowledge structure. For example, by conditioning, that means the schools that we go, the um, life where we have been living, the physicality of the place and also the, the place we have come from, the class and all these things matter and the conditioning of our upbringing is also very, very important.
to understand make sense of it um, when we read a news for example if you are if you are watching a movie if you are reading a news then what happens it actually refers back to your understanding and uh, uh, that also brings certain kind of for example the moment you see a picture then you will make a different discourse out of it maybe when you are reading about uh, uh, a poem or a news story then your discourse is different my discourse is different the story which is also telling uh, in a, the way it is written if you read the headlines say for example um, there is a road accident 16 people died that is one headline the in the in the yesterday night's road accident 16 migrants died is again it it gives a different discourse if you look at in the yesterday's road accident 16 migrants died among them two women and five children see the discourse it is the same news but by providing different language it changes it changes the meaning it changes the importance it changes the impact so that's why every word comma full stop all this important so discourse uh, constitute uh, a, a, the the social economic political and um, uh, a, 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 and psychological um, events which is connected uh, when we read uh, the when we analyze the media content and um, of course uh, the 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 social identity is one thing which keep on emerging uh, if you wanted to see not only i mean economic and political but also the social identity by uh, through its uh, the, the sim through its uh, uh, symbolic uh, elements that are present in the language the analysis of discourse is the analysis of language in use okay so in this If, for example, if it is not a written language, if it is a picture, we can use different content analysis methods. One way of is that analyzing sign, symbol, and uh, its codes. So I will analyze the color, text, and all these things. But we can also do a, disc, uh, a content analysis by using a discourse study. In the discourse analysis. maybe i can see that picture a picture may be very stylistic a picture may be angry a picture may be very cool we may say that what is it the mood the tone of that uh, text which is published that is again we will be understanding so for for a research for a, for a content we can use variety of methods we can use variety of methods but if it is Uh, 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 if you are using a discourse analysis, it is actually based on the language of the text. Sometimes text it's not necessary a written text. So language is an instrument of communication, whose uh, importance is not only to communicate but also communicating one's self, identity, their politics, their culture. That is also there. So that is where we always refer the agenda setting. the agenda setting of the uh, uh, news media or maybe any other media content uh, social media content why certain people like dislike post the timing of the post all these are very very important when we write for example tweet the twitter is giving only certain amount of number of words it is not giving uh, you can write pages and pages uh, maybe like in facebook and other things you can only write certain words in that certain words you are very very specific in your discourse the tweet discourse i mean that the discourse of the tweet you need to explain what you are thinking what your ideology what your comment what you take in that only simple language then when you are decoding that as a researchers what we are doing we are trying to decode the what is told in that when what is told in that it, it it is written in certain language we will be analyzing the each and every word in connection grammar the 
the what comes after uh, the first line and second sentence we will be looking at these things very carefully to unravel to unpack the inner meaning the hidden agendas of the media content okay of the media content for example if you see if there is a continuous programs which are maybe uh, a campaign and advertisement is coming say uh, for example the there is a advertisement of ata okay the floor ata always shows a small family you know it will show that uh, you will have uh, uh, ready made rotis and uh, quickly made and uh, you will be enjoying there is a small family is there you don't find a big family uh, as such in that so here it is something which not about not just only about ata it is also about happiness it is also about uh, yourself and children it is also about uh, living in a better rooms see you don't show uh, the same advertisement in a jopdi or a hut you will show in a decent uh, well lit uh, home so here the discourse of the advertisement is about maybe a, if i look at is a maybe upper middle class so that way you see the the the, the, the hidden agendas it is uh, you need to look at for example i have come across uh, one of the advertisements desh ka namak what is uh, desh ka namak in the sense if it it gives a more connotation which are inner meanings which are there where the, there is a historical movement uh, about the salt and a lot of things which are connected with it and trying to strike uh, an emotional chord among the users so that way you will have even if you see tag lines if you see newspaper headings even if you see news the, the the questions that you get to see in the before the prime time starts so these are all actually need to be understood uh, from the uh, socio political uh, point of view and uh, uh, use this uh, discourse uh, analysis let's look at the speech act theory according to austin in uh, 1962 the speech act theory which focuses on the uh, communicative acts which are performed through speech okay communicative acts in the sense um, in the speech act theory uh, is applicable uh, to discourse analysis we are connecting speech act theory with the uh, discourse analysis and in this why we are doing it because it provides a framework in which to identify the conditions underlying the productions and underlying of an utterance of a particular linguistically realized action in the sense in the us elections uh, sometimes the presidential debates and all you will find uh with the computer generated uh, pictures every movement for example i am saying like this i am telling like this maybe i am telling uh, an expression like this that means the expression also tells uh whether what i am speaking what i am what my hands are expressing what my uh, uh the 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 face is expressing whether it is there is a coordination whether i am telling truth whether i am uh, is there any uh, what is the discourse of the whole body and uh, language and uh, expression that that can be under speech act theory so uh, that's why it is uh, if 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 you look at uh, discourse analysis uh, by using speech act theory then we can also analyze the like again uh, using the conversation analysis we can understand the discourse of a particular uh, speech uh, or a conversation and you see um, the the next is pragmatics the notion of pragmatics that is uh, speaker meaning i mean to say that uh, in this according to fasold uh, in 1993 pragmatics is a study of the use of context to make uh, inferences about the meaning in the sense uh, what is the final uh, finally he is saying i mean say that you are explaining so many things and you are telling so many things finally what is the crux that is thrusting that may be a report or a, a video what is the thrust it is uh, laying on that is uh, very 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 important uh, to look at uh, the, the pragmatics it is also another broad approach to the discourse and uh, pragmatics is uh, one of the uh, way 
and uh, nowadays pragmatics has a broader discussion for example ethnography of communication some psycholinguistic uh, aspects moreover uh, uh, in the discourse analysis also uh, includes the one of the uh, important thing when uh, you are doing the discourse analysis is the speaker meaning based on the concept of grace speaker meaning is what the speaker intended to communicative needs um, not be related to conventional uh, meaning at all it means that speaker meaning may be inferred through a process quite different from the encoding and decoding of course encoding and decoding in your earlier lectures you might have uh, studied to what hall um, where he talks about uh, differential meaning and uh, meaning making uh, basing on your culture and context and um, so that way uh, in this the encoding and decoding process is assumed by code uh, mode of communication in discourse analysis the writing of uh, when you are applying this uh, discourse analysis like in, in the another 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 type of content analysis methods you need to present them first you need to present them in terms of the thematic way when you are writing the report you need to establish certain categories of the content one way is that categorize the content identify uh, the, the 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 exact units where you are using what you are using are you using pragmatics are you using conversation analysis are you using uh, grammatical things so what are the uh, aspects that you are looking at in a uh, in a discourse then you need to see and what it depends on what kind of material uh, what kind of material that you are going to study and applying this discourse analysis so so that you can understand the the hidden meanings and uh, what is not said and all these things so but when you are writing uh, again when you are writing the uh, uh, discourse analysis one of the difficult task is uh, the putting them in a very systematic way so there you need to present it the best way is that present it either in a narrative form either in a narrative form or present it in a thematic form so that it will be presented uh, systematically and uh, event wise and you are trying you also need to connect trying to connect uh, the, the 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 grammatic grammatics of the language with the speech act theory with the um, the uh, pragmatics and um, the other uh, elements of uh, discourse analysis are a language so uh, the, the, in the, these are all again studying about language what are what all there in the language you can also even there is a rhetoric analysis there is a rhetoric analysis like aristotle says see your listeners with your opening that means in any communication the opening should be very very strong so that sees your listeners with your opening so um, that way you see uh, the the political speeches if you see the the, the big rallies addressed um, how, again how they are reported in the news channels is also very very important the type of shot the type of discourse on the particular event is presented okay what is a discourse that uh, particular channel is presenting is also very important it is not just uh, uh, what is reported uh, hours after hours no what is reported we need to go back and see line by line word by word pause by pause and uh, the context what is ticker is going on what is uh, on the side is going on what which day it is telecasted uh, if if you look at all these things very carefully i am sure Uh, exploring the truth uh, is uh, very much possible with this and um, in discourse analysis um, of course every language it is it 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 it, it should be uh, different because it's a culturally bound uh, codes are there like in decoding and encoding of this code mode of communication uh, uh, you need to have the cultural understanding of the language then you can do uh, the Uh, discourse analysis of course many of our students they do it uh, discourse analysis for the english press uh, or uh, popularly hindi press so then uh, uh, it, it more everybody has better understanding but if you are doing it in any regional language it is important for you uh, to uh, to understand uh, the the text in the uh, cultural context then you will be able to understand the 
the pun and other things which are associated with it. Uh, I am sure uh, discourse analysis is uh, like discourse analysis, uh, uh, semiotic analysis, content analysis, textual analysis, they are used for different purposes. Sometimes we use when we are doing a, a, a secondary data analysis, uh, whether they are audio, text or visual material, we choose, we may choose uh, different methods for uh, analyzing uh, uh, different material and also we will try to see the requirement of our methodology, whether this method is suitable or not. So, if, if we use this method, uh, whether our research can be done uh, with more uh, accurate and better uh, way to deal with the uh, truth, I mean to reach to the truth that is very, very important. So, I am sure um, you have learned a lot from this lecture and um, I want you to look at um, uh, the uh, Wimmer and Dominic um, introduction to media research and um, also look at the Susan Horing Priest. Uh, doing media research and there is a um, uh, and, and, and uh, the, the, these are some of the books which you need to see uh, and uh, supplement this uh, lecture and thank you very much keep learning. Thank you.